Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Force Strategy Gaming, casting a game today between Branok and Damaga. So this is a Terran vs Zerg here in Metalopolis, Damaga of course being our red Zerg player and Branok being the yellow Terran player. And let me tell you something, well, I just woke up from a slumber not too long ago and I decided it was time to cast a game but I realized that I was a little bit too tired sounding to cast and it would have came off as a bit ridiculous. So what did I do to remedy this? Well simply I took a step outside in my underpants and it's about 30 degrees and that was not a pleasant experience but if it did nothing else it woke me up so I am ready and excited to cast this game because I am warm and I am not freezing and no shrinkage is taking place so in this matchup what do we expect well these fairly close positions tend to lead to shorter games so that would be something to expect but who knows really what is going to happen we can only speculate but because of these positions very difficult to expand beyond your natural expansion a third base is nearly impossible these first two bases very very difficult to defend these back bases back here, well, what are you going to do? You can get dropped on, you can get Banshee harassed, you can get Speedlings and Mutas in your base. There's a whole lot of bad stuff that can happen when you try to expand back here. And it's very difficult to defend against, especially because your main base is over here. And you obviously want to defend your main base with all of your tech buildings inside of it. So, yes, expanding beyond the natural, very difficult in this matchup. Starting things out, looks like Damaga is going to be doing some SCV harassment, trying to take some damage, trying to put some damage on, trying to lay the smack down on that SCV, and it is going to work because that SCV gets dropped. Now, if he can only get this drone away and out of the base, he's going to be victorious and no getting stabbed in the butt there by that SCV, so that's not very pleasant. But look at what he did do. He delayed the building time by at least 10 seconds, and that is an excellent opportunity to go ahead and drop an expansion. Because of that delay in build time, you know, his early push, if any comes, it's going to be delayed by an 10 15 seconds and that is plenty of time that's enough time to get out that spawning pool and get out those zerglings and easily defend your expansion so the manga feeling pretty comfortable in early expanding now if you haven't been following the scene very much you know we for the longest time saw many 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 zerg players fast expanding on a regular basis but then that kind of curved back because of the fact that because of the fact that two racks pressure from a terran player is very dangerous it's very hard to deal with and it, it can easily take out your expansion but we are seeing here Braddock is not going for that. In fact, he is getting a tech lab here on his barracks. So interested to see what he intends on doing with that. Early Marauder pressure not that likely because of Zerglings, but is he going to be going for... Wow, look at that. He is going for a Reaper, and you don't see that anymore. Reapers do not come into play very, very often anymore because of that nerf, because of the fact that, that the Nitro Packs are no longer, no longer researchable until you get that factory. It just severely delays the amount of time until you can get that and people just aren't using them anymore. It's not, again, nearly as effective as it used to be. Over here for Demaga, we are seeing that queen come out. There is no gas as of yet. There has been no extractor laid down, so we're not going to be seeing any mining or anything going down of Vespine gas. The Reaper is almost out, and what's going on over here? Dropping a fast expansion himself, so Brad feeling a little ballsy gonna be trying to go for fast expansion and uh yeah this is could be a little dangerous against zerglings i guess his idea is that with the reaper on the board he's gonna be able to defend against any early zerglings up until the point that they get that speed upgrade and that's actually pretty wise of uh, Braddock. Now, he could do a bunch of damage here, killing that one zergling. You see pretty much no problem. Two shots, goodbye. But what is he doing? He's, uh, he's not going... He's just running around. I think he's checking for any possible Zerglings. He, uh, again, does want to defend. And you know what? In all honesty, this is probably the best thing to use to defend against Zerg early game. Uh, unless, of course, there were Roaches out. This is going to defend you against any early normal Zerglings. Like, Speedlings, no. But early Zerglings, yes. You can easily defend with the Reaper, your natural expansion. So, hey, good job, Braddock. I, you know, that's something that really I hadn't considered. But that's definitely a really good idea. And, again, you don't see this very often at all from Terran players. Just Reapers don't come into play. But that is a pretty effective use of of it not actually moving into his base unfortunately you can see he's moving back so not going to be trying to take advantage of the reaper to kill any drones but it's serving his purpose again in defending this early expansion so good job Braddock. over here inside of demanga's base that first extractor is down we are of course seeing vespian the first hundred right now and there we go speedling metabolic boost upgrade coming in second extractor on its way over here at the expansion it is up and starting to get saturated spine crawler nice positioning for defense of this and over here he does have to worry about back in this position but anyways back over here inside of Braddock's base, we are seeing that orbital command coming down, a bunker up front. We are going to be seeing a bunch of marines coming out of this barracks with that reactor and hellions. Hellion with infernal pre-igniter. So we are seeing marine hellion opening here for Braddock. We're going to see how effective that is. His big concern 
would be roaches. So hopefully for uh, for Braddock, Tamaga doesn't end up going roaches because if he does, he could be in a lot of trouble. Roaches do well against both Marines and Hellions, even with that Infernal Preigniter, because the Hellion is armored. Uh, the um, I'm sorry, because the Roach is armored, the Hellion doesn't do nearly as well against it. Layer going to be coming in for Damaga as well, about 50% uh, of the way finished, and yeah, Extractor coming down. So just macroing up at this point, Damaga is not looking to be really real offensive. You can see he's only got two Zerglings coming out right now on the board. He has seven currently, so he's going to be sitting with around nine, and uh, that's not a, not a lot. But this is what a lot of Zerg players will do. They'll Macro up until they actually need to build units. Um, until that point, they'll just continue to work on drones, work on their economy, try to saturate that expansion. And, and this is pretty common place for Zerg. Uh, trying to get a Baneling's Nest out right now, so going to be intending on going for some Spieling Baneling. Uh, looks like Braddock is going to be scouting out his opponent, trying to see what Damaga has, trying to see what's going on in his expansion, what kind of defense is there. Also, he's probably going to be taking a look at what type of units. Again, if he sees roaches, he's probably not going to push. But if no roaches, now would be a good time to try to move out and do some damage. And he does see just Zerglings, but that wasn't very telling because only four Zerglings came up, so he doesn't know if Roaches are sitting in the background. But he's going to find out right now, moving down with the Hellions, going to be probably moving into the middle line, trying to do some damage, trying to roast that Queen, but you can see again how ineffective they are, um, except against those light units. He's doing absolutely no damage. Like, it's taken a year and a half to even do any damage to that Queen. Queen's not even getting in the red. Hellion's forced to pull back. Zerglings coming up, and there you can see the effectiveness of the Hellion against those light units. Pretty much no problem. Taking out those Zerglings, not much of an issue at all. With proper micro, it just prevents us around, and you're going to do a crap ton of damage. That's basically the idea. He is moving away right now with this Hellion. He's going to be splitting them up, moving into different positions. Probably checking this out, Naga Tower for some Zerglings. No, he's going to be moving back. Actually, he might be checking this expansion, which would be a great idea, because Damaga has dropped an expansion. Braddock, are you playing with map hacks? I don't actually think so, but, man, that's some really good insight right there. Um, the fact that he even bothered to check for that, and that's definitely a really good idea. More Hellions coming out for Braddock right now, and he's just continuing this Hellion and uh, Marine production. Well, he also does have a Reaper coming out right now, and a couple Marauders on the board, though. There we go. A couple Marauders on the board. There's my production tab. What was I doing? Simpack coming down, Combat Shield, level 1 upgrade as well. The Centrifugal Hooks for his Banelings are coming out, so Debaga is planning on utilizing those Banelings to their full effectiveness. Spire's going to be coming out as well, so looking to possibly go speedling Baneling Muta. That's the likely thing that he will be doing. And you know what? This is actually not too bad a position for Braddock because this Marine Hellion build can do pretty well against speedling Baneling Muta. You have to micro. You have to pay a lot of attention. You need your Marines to stay alive to kill the Mutalists, and you need your Hellions to take care of the speedlings and Banelings. But with proper micro, this can do pretty well for him. So we shall see how that plays out. And what's going on over here? Hellion push and Marines and a couple Marauders pushing forward. So this could be quite, quite effective. Lots of units right now over here for Braddock. He's going to be pushing forward. Also attacking expansion over here with this one Reaper and these three Hellions. Pushing forward, trying to roast, roast the Queen. He has to stay away from those Banelings, though. He needs those Marines to stay alive to defend against any Mutalists that may come out. And Hellion's going to be trying to continue to roast again. They're not that effective against buildings. They're only really good against light units. The Marauder's doing a good job, though, of taking down buildings. And I think he's going to kill this hatchery. But no, the Mutalists come out. And this is where the problem begins. So very light on Marines. And he did lose a couple of Marines to that Baneling attack. And because of that, he's just not going to have enough anti-air to take care of these Mutalists. Lots of Mutalists on the board. So uh, Braddock could be in a bit of trouble if he doesn't have enough back at home. And also Mutalists are going to be moving into this position, trying to defend this expansion, but not before it drops. The Reaper, of course, helped those Hellions quite a bit in taking down that expansion. Over here inside of Braddock's base, we have uh, a couple Marines. Let's check, take a look at that unit counting station. There it is. So seven Marines at the moment. That at Right now, that is not enough. He's definitely going to need more to be able to defend against all those Mutalists if those Mutalists decide to push out right now. Hellions helping against the Zerg push at the moment. Some additional Zerglings and Banelings coming down right now. Uh, yeah, just two Banelings, so not too, too dangerous. But look at this cloud of Mutalists and not enough Marines at all. But some excellent turret placement here by Braddock. Um, I am impressed with that. Let's see what he's got up here. Some nice turrets right over here as well. Turret over here. So really solid turret pl placement by Braddock. It's going to make any mutal harass uh, much less threatening. Now, once Damaga does get a few more mutas, so Bailey's going to be moving forward. I'll stop talking about the mutal. It's going to be trying to move into the mineral line. Stim pack going down, splitting up his units, moving the SCVs away, staying away from the Bailings so far, and the Banelings. Oh, one hit goes down, but it doesn't kill the SCVs. The Banelings did absolutely no damage. Great micro by Braddock. That was really impressive. He managed to keep all of his SCVs alive. He took damage, but they didn't die. And on top of that, he didn't really lose any units. I think he lost like a couple Marines and a Marauder, and that's it. 
There was a lot of Banelings there. That was a lot of investment for Zamaga to do as little damage as he did. Some Hellions are going to be moving forward for Braddock. I don't think they're going to do too much damage. We'll see what happens, though. Trying to roast a couple Zerglings. Maybe try to get a couple of drones before you die. But no, getting dropped very quickly to all these Mutas. So at this point, it becomes a little bit difficult for Braddock. He needs to really continue to stay aggressive. If he clams up and stays in his base because of all these Mutalists, then all that's going to happen is Zamaga is just going to take map control and prevent... Uh, prevent Braddock from expanding at all and that's gonna stop him from getting minerals and that's gonna make him lose again. Banelink moving forward rolling right into the Marines all of those Marines die there was one left but no, no Marines left at the moment trying to take out this expansion they'll try to make some use of the attack the expansion does go down so you, again you can see how quickly Marauders make work of expansions good job there but that was a little unfortunate, the fact that he did lose all of those Marines. If he kept them alive, he could have uh, fared a little bit more of a chance against these Mutalists. There are quite a bit at the moment, though. Uh, back at the unit counter station, we can see there are 13 Mutalists right now. So he's going to need a, a sizable force of Marines in order to deal with that. Something he doesn't have at the moment. He is continuing up production like a good player should. Uh, basically producing non-stop while he's attacking, while he's doing anything else. Uh, drone's going to be transferring over here to this expansion. This is going to help Demaga quite a bit. These two spine crawlers sh should help fend off any small armies like that like the ones that initially took it out you know we saw two hellions and a reaper take out this expansion well that's not going to happen with these spine crawlers here so nice placement there by demaga demaga flying around trying to find any little forces trying to sneak around he's going to see these hellions and actually again the spine crawler should do a pretty good job of taking them out by themselves Again, you can see the good place. My pretty much covering the whole of his mineral lines, but losing a lot of drones to those Hellions. That Infernal Pre-Igniter and the fact that he didn't pull his drones away when they came in uh, pretty much caused him to lose a ton there. Braddock trying to move this high yield. This is a risky This is risky business right here. And no, not the movie. This is just risky business, the term. And the reason being is because, you know, again, it's so wide open, so open to Mutalus harass. Zerglings, Banelings rolling in from every direction. Mutalus going to be trying to move in before missile turret production um, is complete. However, they do have to contend with these uh, with these marine guys here. That, that's what they're called. There we go. They, he, he does have to contend with those marines. Going to be rolling in with those banelings as well. Lifting off the command center. Great job by Braddock. Uh, and doing lots of damage here to these mutalists. These marines very well, especially with the medevac backup there. Marine stim pack going down. Zergly's getting surround though, so those marines should disappear fairly quickly. The Mutalists do manage to fend off all, all of those Marines, but more Marines are going to be rolling forward. And I don't think at this p point Demaga has enough Zerglings and Banelings to take care of the Marines. So he's going to be forced to push back. Uh, the Command Center does go down, and we're probably going to see it transformed at some point into a Planetary Fortress, I would imagine. That would be the, the probable choice because of the fact that it's going to be so difficult to defend. He does want that extra help there. Speedling's trying to wrap around those Marines, and good job by Braddock by microwing them away and keeping them alive. But Banelings rolling in, and that's a problem. So you can see what happens, that's kind of a general tactic as Zerg. You surround the units with Zerglings, and then you roll in the Banelings. So the, the, the units can't micro back if they're surrounded properly. And uh, yeah, and then the Marines just kind of disappear. So good job by Demaga there. Now outside of Demaga's base, what do we have going on? Uh, let me get that production tab up there. Uh, well, some Speedlings and Banelings on their way out. Uh, Brack is choosing to go for the Orbital Command, so he's feeling pretty comfortable in defending it without that building. And inside of his base, we're getting some upgrades here. Uh, the level 3 upgrades, so good job. Those Marines are going to be super baller once that finishes. And just some Marines and Hellions on the way out as well. So been sticking to this Marine Hellion build. And, I mean, as you can see, it's been fairly effective throwing in some Marauders when he decides to push for building sniping. But beside that, it's pretty much been Marine Hellion all the way. And, yeah, good job. I mean, it's been looking solid. Has he got some upgrades here for these Hellions? He does have one armor upgrade, uh, no damage upgrade, however. But that one armor upgrade, of course, does help them live a little bit longer when they get surrounded. It also helps them stay up a little bit longer against these guys over here. These mutilists flying around being a pain in the butt. Over here, we are seeing a drop going down. Going to be trying to pick off the expansion here for Demonger. We're going to see how effective this is. Being holy marines, um, it's going to do a good job if any uh, mulas try to push out, basically. But maybe we'll see a two-pronged attack. That would actually be really great if you could stim up, attack over here, and then try to hit the main base of Demaga. That's kind of a good idea in general. Distracting your opponent in one position and then pushing into another. So moving down, taking down the queen. Also going to be pushing back those mulas there. There isn't quite enough. And here we go. We are seeing this hellion and slight marine force pushing forward into Demaga's main base. Probably going to take down this expansion, taking a lot of bailing loss, but that is because of this attack going on down here. Braddock was, of course, paying attention to this. Bailing is going to be rolling into those Hellions, doing a lot of damage. You get a micro away, that's the only way you're going to stay alive. But these Marines, being the heroes that they are, probably one of the most overpowered unit. 
Um, I just say that because people cry about them all the time. I think it's funny. Marines are super baller. Look at that. And uh, Damaga does call a good game because he realizes it, it's game over. This drop over here did manage to take down the expansion. And then it looks like these Marines were going to do quite a number over here. If not killing the Sahatri, then at the very least they would have killed a lot of drones. And at the moment, Damaga just didn't have enough to deal with it. He doesn't have enough resources. He can only make, what, one, two more? Two more meterless, and that's about it. So, yeah, good job by both players here. This was a really cool game. I'm uh, really happy to cast. It was really exciting and fun. In fact, I do have another game between these two players, between Braddock and Zamaga, and I, I think I'm going to be casting that right after. Also, I do have uh, a new series I'm going to be starting up for, StarCraft, and I might be releasing that today. If not, then you can see it sometime in the near future, um, but I'm excited about it. I think you guys will enjoy it as well. Yeah, lots of new things going on here for Strategy Gaming. So, once again, guys, this is Esmond Force from Force Strategy Gaming. If you guys like our videos and you like what's going on here make sure you subscribe to our channel give my videos a thumbs up comment do all that stuff that helps me out and uh lets me continue to produce videos and as always guys keep watching and keep owning oh and also i want to wrap up this video because i just realized what i said sounded like what people say it sounds like at the end of my videos i say keep watching and keep owning you know like o-w-n-i-n-g you know to own somebody but a lot of people think I say keep watching and keep boning. Well, you know what? You can choose what you want to do. You can keep owning or keep boning. Either way, make sure you're having a fun time with what you're doing. See you guys. You can't buy the time for those attachments. Obviously, something you should avoid doing is getting supply blocked. The drop coming down right now from White Raw into Straylock's mineral line. This is going to do a lot of damage. He doesn't have enough units up here right now. Straylock does not have enough units to deal with. The lots of SCVs going down. Those zealots making quick, quick work of the SCVs. One shot, two shot. Goodbye and lots of damage from White Raw. Very, very devastating. Gonna be warping in some units as well. Now on this front right now, Straylock is gonna continue with the attack. He's deciding not to retreat, not to defend his main base from the Zealots. He just wants to go through and try to attack White Raw.